Becca. Hey. What you doing? Working on the lion. I got the eye done. It's very detailed, but it took me multiple days to do. So now I'm moving on to the next block. Got to get this done. A lion? That's not much of a Christmas quilty thing. No. it's. I don't have to have this done until January, but if I'm being honest, I think it's going to be February before it's done. So are you quilting anything for Christmas? Uh-oh. And that's when she knew she messed up. Hey friends, welcome back to my sewing room. My name is Becca and you heard the boss. I got to get to work on some Christmas gifts. Fortunately, I know exactly what I'm going to make. As I was scrolling through Instagram a few days ago, I noticed Center Street Quilts had a brand new pattern that dropped. It's for the Hemingway pouch, and this comes in a number of different sizes, and I am in love with this project. I think they look really nice. They are extremely functional. They are very easy to make, and they're a quick sew. Everybody on my Christmas list is getting one of these this year. In today's video, we are going to do a tutorial that steps through how I made one of these step by step because I kind of needed that the first time I went through. I am a visual learner and the pattern, while it was great, I much prefer to see somebody put something together than to read through a set of instructions. So I did all of that work for you and now I'm going to visually show you and talk you through each of those steps. I am not, however, going to give you any of the cutting instructions for this because that would render the pattern useless and that's not fair to the pattern designer. If you decide that you want to make one of these, please use the link in the description box below to hop over to Center Street Quilts Etsy shop and pick up a copy of their pattern. Let's get to it. I have my pattern picked out and my fabric selected and I am ready to get sewing. But before we do, I want to point out a couple of things. First off, this pattern includes the instructions to make four different sizes of this pouch. If you're having trouble deciding which pouch to make on page one of the pattern, they have listed out all four sizes and they give you the measurements of the pouch when it's laid flat and examples of the type of things that might be stored inside. Additionally, you'll find all of the fabric requirements here as well. The second thing I want to point out is that you'll need three different fabrics for this pouch. You need your exterior fabric, your lining fabric, and then an accent fabric which is used to accent the zipper as well as bind the inside raw edges of the pouch. One last thing, the cutting instructions, in case you're worried, are very generous. So if you're shy by about an inch or so on your fabric or interfacing, don't sweat it you're going to have plenty of room after you quilt it to square it down and you might still be okay. These are the materials that I'll be working with. This is going to be my accent and binding fabric. This is my exterior and this is my interior. And for those of you that are curious, because I know somebody out there is going to ask, these are prints from the Harper's Garden line by Sherry and Chelsea. This is out of print though, and it is a couple of years old, so it might be hard to find. For my zipper, I am using a 30 inch by Annie double slide handbag zipper. And this is genius because the pouch, as you will see, is only going to use one side of the zipper tape per pouch. This has obviously two sides of the zipper tape and it has two heads. So this one package is going to help me make two different pouches. Speaking of pouches, I will be making the large size today because I feel like this is the perfect size for my recipient. I envision them using this to carry their iPad around or maybe a notebook and a couple of pens. To gift it, I'm going to use it to put some Bath and Body Works products down inside, but it's a very practical item that they should hopefully get a lot of use out for years to come. One last thing before I get started, the pattern does say that you can use some foam, sew-in interfacing, some fusible fleece, or some batting. I am opting to use the foam from By Annie because I feel like that gives the pouch a little bit more cushion and it'll provide a little bit more protection to the iPad that's gonna be inside. But you can totally make this work with some scrap quilt batting. And if you want it to be a little bit more fluffier, you can just double up on that batting as well. So I've got all of my fabric cut. I'm gonna take it over, get it starched, and I'll meet you right back here. Before we build the pouch, we have to quilt our fabric. So we're gonna make a quilt sandwich. 
We're going to take our lining fabric and lay it out pretty side down. You can see there's the pretty side of the fabric. Then we're going to take our interfacing. This is our quilt batting, our fusible fleece, our foam, whatever it is we're using, and put that right on top. And then last is going to be our exterior fabric pretty side up. So the wrong sides of your fabrics are what's touching your middle layer. You can quilt this however you'd like free motion quilting, matchstick quilting, whatever works for you. I am going to draw some lines on here and I'm going to make them about an inch apart. So I'm going to grab a ruler and I'm going to start over at the left side. I'm going to make my first line. I'm using an air soluble pen that will create markings on the fabric that are just going to disappear over time. I'm just going to draw my first line. I'm going to make sure that the ruler is straight with the fabric because this is going to be the line that I start measuring everything off of. Then I'm going to come over with my ruler. I'm going to find that one inch mark. I'm going to lay it right on top of the line that I just drew. And I'm going to draw another line. And I'm going to keep doing this all across the fabric. Now, if you're curious about the pen that I am using, this is the Sew Line Air Erasable or Air Soluble Marker or pen. It feels just like a pen, which I love. The markings come off my fabric after a day or so without any extra work from me. This is my go-to marking utensil. If you want to pick one of these up and give it a try, I will link to this product in the description box down below. Okay, let's kick it into high speed and get this fabric marked up. Once we have the lines drawn on here, we're just going to take this to the sewing machine and stitch directly on those lines. I want this to have more of a quilted look, so I'm not going to use a tight stitch. I'm actually going to change my stitch length to about three and a half. And by the way, this is a great time for you to play with some of those decorative stitches. Maybe you have some really neat stitches that do like little zigzags. You can use this line as your guide and let the machine do some of those decorative stitches. Since my machine is straight stitch only, I'm just going to do straight lines. And if you're curious, I am quilting this with Aurifil color 2600 Dove Gray, and I'm just using a 50 weight. I like the 2600 because it blends with just about everything. I can put it on my machine, use it for piecing, use it for quilting, whatever works. There are three thread colors that I feel like I kind of bounce between. 2600, which is this Dove Gray, and honestly, it can read as like a white. 2625, anytime I need a darker thread, it's like a very dark gray. And then if I need a cream color or a white, I'll go with 6722, which really is kind of a creamy ivory color, but it reads white. I very rarely use bright white thread or solid black thread. And if I'm being honest, when I shop for thread, I just shop for those three colors because most of what I do on the Juki is just piecing. I save my money for the pretty colors for my long arm. Okay, let's kick it into high gear and get this beautiful fabric quilted. One thing I will tell you is once I get kind of like halfway through, I'm starting to build up bulk over here in the throat of the machine. So I'll flip it around and put the bulk off to the left of the machine and start stitching it from the other direction. Once everything is fully quilted, you're going to square this up, but you need to know which size you're doing. If you're doing the small size, then this is going to be 
taller than it is wide. But for all of the other sizes, it's going to be wider than it is tall. So just make sure you're paying attention to the orientation of your quilted sandwich before you trim. Once this is squared up, you need to reference your pattern because we're going to make one more cut starting somewhere along the right edge and ending in the top left corner. This starting point is going to depend on the size of the pouch that you're making. Every size pouch has a different starting point. So remember what size you're making, reference the pattern, and mark that spot on the right side of your quilted sandwich. Just keep in mind, if you're doing any size other than small, it should be wider than it is tall. I've already made my little dot. I don't even know if you can see it on camera. So I'm going to grab my super long ruler. I'm going to put that ruler right on that dot that I made on the fabric. I'm going to put the other end of the ruler right in the upper left-hand corner. And I'm just going to sail through just like this. And we're going to separate that. It would help if I cut through all three layers. There we go. This we discard. I feel like there should be another use for this because this feels very wasteful. Maybe you can find a good use for this, but I don't know what to do with it. So if you've got an idea, let me know in the comments down below. Now we need to prepare our accent and our binding fabric from that quarter yard cut that we made. So I'm going to grab a ruler and I'm going to cut off two strips that are going to be used for that. Reference the pattern instructions for the actual size that you need to cut. I will point out that you really didn't need a full quarter yard for this. This is my extra. You probably only need an eighth of a yard or so. We do have to prepare both of these fabrics to be used in the project, and the pattern wants us to take them and press them in half lengthwise, just like you would do with binding. So I'm going to do that to both of these. If you're wondering why I'm finger pressing this first, it's really just because I want to get on with it and my iron is still heating up. So anytime my iron's a little cool and needs to take time to heat up, I'll start finger pressing my binding in half and then I'll set it with that hot iron once the iron's fully heated. Just in time. Iron's heated up, so let's press that. Now it's time to put this together, so let's prepare our zipper. I'm going to open my package. And I want to cut off these little metal stops. Since I'm using a nylon zipper, I can just sail through that with my rotary cutter and discard that. I know this part seems really scary, but it is necessary. We're going to pull the heads completely off of the zipper tape. Then we're going to come in here and pull it apart. Oh my gosh, this is so satisfying, but also so scary at the same time. You're going to need one side of the zipper tape and one head per pouch. So this is left over for another pouch that I can do later. Then we're going to flip this over so that the lining side is up. Grab our accent fabric and attach it to the back along that diagonal, just like you would binding. You're going to put the raw edges right up alongside this cut edge and stitch about a quarter inch away, flip it over, and then secure it from the front at about an eighth of an inch away from the fold. You do want to make sure that you have a little bit of that accent fabric hanging off of the edge. And if you had your machine set to three and a half stitches, then you might want to turn it back down for this. I set mine at two and a half now. Thank you. 
Once that accent strip is attached to the back, you're going to press it out and then fold it over just like you would with binding. You can use some clips or some pins to secure this down. You could even glue it in place if you'd like. I'm just going to wing it and hold it with my hands. Now, because I want my stitching on the outside to be uniform, I am going to change this back up to three and a half stitches per millimeter or inch or whatever that setting is because that's what I quilted this at and I just want it to look uniform. I'm going to stitch right next to that fold all the way along my accent strip. Don't worry if you are a little bit more than an eighth of an inch away from the edge. The goal here really is just that you're holding this down so that the raw edge of your quilted pouch is enclosed. Then we're going to take our zipper tape. And for this, I probably will use some clips. We're going to lay the zipper tape so that the teeth are going this way and popped up. And we're going to place our little fabric pouch right on top of that. And we're just going to clip this in place. We should have some of that zipper tape extending off both ends. We're going to go along the diagonal. And with that same stitch length that we used before, we're going to stitch on the other edge of that binding strip. So instead of stitching next to the fold that's touching our body, we're going to be stitching next to the fold that's butted up against the zipper teeth. If you're not great at sewing perfectly straight, using a thread that blends into your accent fabric is a good trick to make your bag or pouch look a little bit more polished. If the thread doesn't pop out, they won't see that you didn't go perfectly straight. Once this is secured, then we're going to fold it so that the inside fabrics are touching. We want to make sure that this edge and this edge are lined up nicely together. And to keep everything nice and tidy in place, I like to put a few clips along the side, just a couple, and a couple clips along the bottom. This is going to save me from having it fly open when I'm trying to do the next step. Then we're going to take this and fold it over until the zipper matches up. And then here I'll take a clip on the top and another one on the side. And what you're looking for at this stage is that this edge here and this edge here are lined up nicely. That's the most important thing. You can now come in and trim off this excess fabric. This will just get it out of the way. You don't need to worry about making sure that it's perfectly straight right now because we're going to clean it up with the rotary cutter in a minute. But we do want our zipper to have some excess hanging off here so that we can put our head back on. And this is honestly the hardest thing to figure out. I'll show you what I do, but it does take me a little bit to get it on. I'm going to put the head of the zipper on to the zipper tape. There are some notions out there that supposedly make this easier, but I've not tried them. This is what I do, and it does take me a couple of times to put it on. 
we're going to slide one end of the zipper tape onto the mouth of the zipper so that we've got some of the zipper tape coming out of the back. That's completely normal. It's going to slide back and forth. That's great. But it's not actually, you know, closing the zipper because the other side isn't in here. So we're going to take the other side and this becomes easier because the clips are holding this shut for us. And we're going to feed it into the mouth of the zipper. And once we get it into that zipper pull, uh, you might have to fuss with this a couple of times. If it starts to fray on you, sometimes I find snipping off a little bit will help. Once you get it in there, you should be able to pull it down. Like I said, it's going to take a little bit. As you can see, putting the zipper head on is a little finicky and can be a little uncomfortable and difficult. But Sally Tomato has an excellent two minute video that I will link in the description box below that really helps. Essentially, they recommend keeping one side of the zipper tape shorter than the other and then put it on the long side then try to feed the shorter side in, give it a little push and it'll click into place. There we go. It does take a little bit of patience to get this on. I've heard rumors that you can use a fork to kind of stabilize a zipper head. There's a number of different thingamajigs that you could use out there, but this does work for me. I just have to be a little patient. It probably takes me about a minute or two to get the head back on. Once it's on, you're going to pull it all the way up. Then I like to come in with a straight edge and my rotary cutter. And I'm going to clean this up. Now that this side is cleaned up and we've got our zipper secured, we're doing the last step and that's going to be to bind this part. We want to pull the zipper open about halfway. Be sure not to pull it back off because that's going to be a pain in your butt. Turn it inside out. Be gentle with that zipper. And then we're going to fold it back so that it has the same shape that it did before. I find the easiest way to do that is to line up the bottom corner, secure it with a couple of clips, and then smooth it out up here and hold it tight with a clip. We're going to take that binding strip that we had from before, leave an overhang of about, oh, it'll tell you in the pattern, I think a half inch or so. You're going to leave an overhang and you're going to stitch all the way down, miter your corner down here and across the bottom and leave an overhang. And if you don't know how to do the mitering of the corners or any of that other stuff, I have an excellent binding video that you can check out. I will link it in the description box below. I'm going to go stitch this at about a quarter of an inch, miter the corner, and then flip it over. Once you've secured it to one end, you're going to wrap it around to the other side and bind just like you normally would. The only thing you have to remember is that you have an overhang here. And so what I find is I fold this in and then pull it over and I'll stitch all the way along either side. If this step is too finicky for you, you can always just zigzag or surge these two sides and it would be perfectly fine. Your edges won't be as pretty on the inside of the bag, but it is the inside of the bag. Mine is all sewn together and I want to point out that my binding is not perfect, but you know what? Nobody's going to see that unless they take your bag and turn it inside out and really inspect this. Don't worry about it. The whole purpose of the binding inside of the bag is just to really protect those raw edges and make it look a little bit more finished. So once we have the binding fully sewn on, I'm going to open the zipper all the way up. I'm going to reach in and turn it right side out. And then I like to take a little tool. This is a tool I got from, I think it's American Made is the name of the company. Got a beautiful pointer, a seam ripper, 
and one of those creaser things at QuiltCon Atlanta 2023, and I absolutely love them. I'm going to use this to pop the corners out as much as I can, though keep in mind there's a lot of bulk in these corners, so you're not going to get necessarily a very pointy corner, and that's actually okay in my book. I don't want to clip those corners down because then I'm exposing the fabric behind the binding. So I'm kind of just going to accept that some of the corners <laughs> might look a little more rounded. Then we close it up and voila! And there we have our Hemingway pouch. I absolutely love how this turned out. It is a fast sew. It looks really good and it is super functional. Definitely easy to make. Let me know in the comments down below if you're going to pick up a copy of this pattern and make any of these for Christmas gifts. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye! Okay. Yo, <laughs> Get you, got my quilt, you got my quilt ready? <laughs> no, I don't got your quilt ready. <laughs> you can't ask me to do a quilt in three days. <laughs> do I need to get some elves up in this? <laughs> you got to go get some elves. <laughs> I ain't your Christmas elf. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs>